All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about and demonstrate a uh, third movement principle called bending. If you haven't seen the ones for the buoy or bowing exercises, I'd recommend seeing those first. Um, I'm just going to brush up on them a little bit anyways here. But the primary difference between uh, bending and bowing for these exercise purposes is that the bowing is going to involve maintaining the neutral alignment in the spine through different orientations, such as this. going back and forth, and with the bending, you're actually going to be um, flexing and extending the spine itself, actually changing the orientation within the spine, primarily through um, occipital and pelvic tilts back and forth. So, um, as I just said, um, the, the forward bending, we're going to soften the knees, have a slight pelvic tilt and occipital tilt, when you first start these um, movements, you'll probably feel focal points of tension, um, both above and below, uh, depending. Uh, the goal is to practice these exercises and get those focal points to diffuse and connect so that they um, can be engaged with one motor plan. So I bend forward. The other component of that, aside from the again pelvic tilt, occipital tilt is separating the shoulder blades and letting them drape forward and down over the ribcage. If I feel any tension or muscle being stretched, I'm going to press through the feet and then bring myself back to an upright and tall neutral position. Right. For the back bending, um, when you initiate the occipital tilt in the backwards direction with the extension of the spine, I usually recommend clenching the jaw gently. That's going to gen that will generally let you engage the muscles of the neck first before you pinch anything in back as a result of hyperextension. So again, if I clench the teeth, you'll tend to feel I I would feel more of a stretch. It's generally the case. If I open the jaw, I'll get much more range of motion going back, but you'll probably feel a little discomfort in the back of the neck before these neck muscles engage if you have any underlying um, tension patterns or just not very good um, intuition as far as how to use their, your body. So that's the indication for the occipital tilt in the backwards direction. As far as the shoulders, you want to allow the shoulders to retract, come towards each other at the same time. All right. And then as far as the lower body, generally it's difficult for people to um, keep the tailbone out um, just because it's always good for people to loosen up the hip flexors. So I generally don't emphasize a lot of hyperextension in the lumbar curve at the expense of the hip flexors. Doing an activity such as this and sticking the butt out. Just so, um, for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to recommend that from the lumbar spine down, it's performed very similar, and I'll get into some details on how it differs in a few seconds. So, when I do the back bending component, I start by standing tall. I allow the shoulder blades to come together. My hips start coming forward. My heels are softening. And my head starts going back. At a certain point, you won't be able to go back with the head. You won't be able to go forward with the hips. You're going to have to start pivoting and adding a rotational component to continue with the movement. So again, starting tall, initially forward and back but then slowly going to arc and rotate into adding an upward component, forward and up, and a backward and down component of the head. If you feel any muscles stretching, again, pull through those muscles 
Keep the spine as still as possible. Avoid making any abrupt movements and bring yourself back tall to a neutral position. Again, the focal points and the goal for these exercises is not extreme ranges of motion. It's just coordinating the motor plan. Um, that will generally allow you, it will lead to increased range of motion without stressing the joints overall, but that's not necessarily the goal. You don't want to approach it with that mindset. You're looking for fine muscle coordination and increased mobility with a low sensation of intensity. So again, standing tall for the forward bending, occipital tilt, pelvic tilt, around the shoulder blades, and I'm softening the hips and knees downward at the same time. I did mention as far as not wanting to um, sacrifice the uh, flexibility of the hips with the back bending. So there are many other ways to do this for the forward bending. One of the primary reasons I don't recommend keeping the legs straight is when you're first starting off, you may have some tight neck muscles and people tend to get some type of positional uh, dizziness or circulation issues that arise from lowering the head below the hips. Again, if you have any tight neck muscles, poor circulation, anything like that, it tends to be a little bit of a blood rush that may come from lowering the head. And you just want to work with that. Sometimes people will come up too quickly, see a few stars or something like that. So when you're doing these exercises, I usually, again, just like in the earlier exercises, recommend the lowering movement to initiate from the hips. Let the rest of the body follow after that. And for the most part, if you initiate lowering through the hips, your head will not go lower than your hips. It will stay above, and you can increase the intensity and the range of motion without having to worry about any blood rush to the head. Okay. So from here, I've got the shoulder blades separated. I feel some muscle activity. And I'm coming up slowly with the goal of coming back tall into a neutral position with a coordinated movement of everything that I just engaged. Just like with the bending exercise, you always want to avoid increasing tension and accumulating tension on front and back of the body at the same time because that's going to shorten the trunk, shorten the spine, and increase pressure on the discs. So <clears throat> if you feel anything accumulating, it's always a good idea to stand tall, maybe even take a few extra breaths at the top of the movement before going the other way. So again, with the buoy exercise, press through the feet, push the head upward, and then as the hips go forward, the head goes back, I'm feeling the shoulder blades fall back in together. And then right around this point or so, maybe for some people might be at a different point, but again, to continue with the movement engaging with the neck, I would recommend balancing that out with any sensation of pressing evenly through the feet and getting some type of forward and lifting movement at the hips to hollow out the back. Generally, I don't recommend just squeezing the back to, and leading to some type of compression. Try to get the movement through the legs and the hips to push the arch that you're going for. And then when you feel that some muscles are engaged, keep those active. Don't make any too abrupt movements so that you can keep the tension pattern coordinated to your neutral position so that you don't have, again, so you don't have to shift gears when you're doing your exercises and when you're not. To be able to fine tune the motor plan is to stimulate this kind of muscle activity, very minimal movements over time. So I think that's pretty important. Um, as far as anatomy, primary things with the core and the trunk is the attention to the lats. The lats essentially function like a very large bowstring that can assist your trunk with flexion and extension if you use it right. So that's why we bring the shoulders forward at a certain point 
if you bow the spine with forward flexion, the lats will cut the curve and you can use them to engage in further flexion of the trunk. Similarly, you want to allow them to relax <clears throat> and get a strong motor plan going to the neutral position. When I start going back, the space here starts to open up. The lats are going to hug a little bit closer to the midline now. And when I squeeze that, I'm going to bring my trunk to a little bit more extension. So the lats are going to assist pulling the shoulder blades back, hollowing out the back, and bringing you into further extension there. And then you want to bring that back to the neutral position. Okay, when you first start, you may feel some focal points of tension, and the goal is to coordinate those above and below vertically. As you're doing the exercise, over time, I think I might have mentioned this before, but over time, the tension pattern that you're going to feel along the midline is going to disperse. You're going to feel it a little bit more um, out laterally towards the sides of the back, engaging slightly different musculature <clears throat> with the forward flexion. So again, as that progression goes more and more, you're actually going to have to engage some muscles to assist with the flexion. First the lats, but then you're also going to engage the obliques and the rectus abdominis along with the pecs to bring the shoulders forward and continue flexion of the spine. So again, you're going to need to engage these muscles isometrically because gravity is not allowing them to be engaged. It's going to put more of a stretch in the back. Then at a certain point, you're just going to have to fine tune flexing these muscles to the point where again, you're going to re-engage some type of stretch in the back. And then when you feel those muscles in the back work, you'll pull yourself back up through them and release any isometric tension that you had in the front <clears throat> on the way up. Similarly, as you're going back, you're going to start probably by feeling tension in the abdomen. Over time, as the muscles are able to disperse, and coordinate their length tension relationships with the other muscles around them, you're going to engage muscles more laterally. So first maybe along the midline somewhere, then off along the pecs, obliques, hip flexors, and then again at a certain point you may be able to facilitate the exercise by actively squeezing the back muscles, the glutes, the hamstrings. When you're at that point of actively engaging those muscles, you're pretty soon afterwards going to feel the stretch back on the front, and that's what you're going to pull yourself back through as you slowly release the activity on the back. Again, with each one, breathe in, stand tall in between, try to get as relaxed as possible between bending forward and bending back. So let me know if there's any questions. I'll probably repost this video addressing a few of them, and then I'll get on to the fourth um, video, which is bending.